This is Body, Brain, and Pain. I'm Erin Babineau. And I'm Michelle Steggy. We are two doctors of physical therapy and orthopedic specialists here to have an approachable and courageous conversation about pain and our bodies that will be forever changing and aging. This podcast is for everyone, not just medical providers. The better you understand pain, the more control you gain. Welcome back, everyone. Michelle and I are kicking off the new year with some special episodes that will be a little bit longer and a little more conversational. So we're going to have some of our favorite people who we frequently talk to behind the scenes about a lot of these topics about pain and pain neuroscience and have a little longer episodes where you can become part of the conversation. So these special episodes will kind of be throughout the year. We'll have a few beginning this first quarter of the year, and we hope you enjoy them. So today's first guest is Dr. Kayla Conway. Kayla is not only a dear friend of mine that I met during our physical therapy doctorate program at the University of Minnesota, but she's also honestly my personal mentor on pain neuroscience. (laughs) Kayla is one of a handful of pediatric pain physical therapists in the United States. She, again, got her doctor of physical therapy at the University of Minnesota and currently works at Masonic Children's Hospital in Minneapolis, treating some of the sickest kiddos around the whole world and specializes in chronic pain. Uh, Oftentimes, Kayla Kayla and I find ourselves... Um, leaving a hangout over beers and we're standing at the door and an hour later we realize we've been talking about pain science. So um, hopefully you kind of get a glimpse of that today, but welcome Kayla. (laughs) So Kayla, I really want to talk first about your pain training. Um, You finished your kind of therapeutic pain specialist education through Evidence in Motion Um, and describe kind of that process and also just generally how you got into this. Yeah. So first of all, thanks for having me, you guys. I'm super excited to be here. Um, yeah, I, if you would have told me when I was in PT school that I would have been, um, treating people with chronic pain, I would have told you you're crazy. I would have been super (laughs) intimidated by the idea. Um, I, but I was a, actually a student at the University of Minnesota Masonic Children's Hospital. Um, and that's how I first got involved actually with the pain team that I work on now. Um, because my clinical instructor was a part of that team. Um, and you know, just really the moment I started working with the team, fell in love with it, fell in love with what we did, the, how much, you know, kids were getting better. And, um, it's, it, it was really, it became a passion of mine. Um, so then I, you know, pursued more education in it, um, when I was, you know, graduated from the U of M and started actually working as a full-time physical therapist for, um, Masonic Children's Hospital. I took a course and actually, um, it was during my first course that one of the, um, one of the instructors of the course said to us, you know, how many of you in the room here, you know, have chronic pain, have pain that persistent pain that you've had for a long time. And then they, you know, said, and how many of you have had that pain while you were treating someone with pain? And, you know, (laughs) everyone, you know, exactly what you guys just did. Everybody just kind of chuckled. (laughs) chuckled. Um, And then he, then he proceeded to say, and how many, while you were treating that person with pain, thought that your pain was worse than that person's pain? And, you know, and then we really, then the laughter of recognition really came and, and, you know, and his, his whole point, which, and this is something that now, you know, this is one of the many conversations Aaron and I have had and Michelle and I, you know, had earlier this week was why is it that we can treat patients with pain while we're in pain ourselves? And, and really the big thing is it comes down to is we understand our pain and we're not afraid of it. It's not, yeah. it's mm-hmm. not this nefarious thing that, you know, is, is scary and gonna, you know, take over our lives. It's like, oh, it's this thing. We know how to deal with it. We work through it every day. Um, and, and we move on. 
Right. It's back to a lot of what we've talked in, in this podcast where it's, you know, pain is often information and it's not, it's not damage. It's not mm -hmm. this detrimental thing. And, and we're getting into that deeper, deeper conversation of res creating resiliency. So, mm -hmm. um, versus suffering and, and, you know, we've said this many times that information is truly power. Knowledge is power. So, um, like you said so perfectly, what's the difference? Well, when we don't have information, we feel help helpless, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so, we've talked about we've talked about in the past too how a single session of pain education can make a change for people that don't understand pain. Yeah, which is so powerful in itself. Totally. Yeah, definitely. So Kayla, describe, you know, how you do this for patients at Masonic Children's. So you're dealing with some of the sickest kiddos that have pancreatitis, which is terrible pain, some of the worst pain. So they do have some of this organic cause, but then they get some treatment for it and some extensive surgery, which we won't get into maybe in a future episode. Um, but how does your guys' team approach this? Who's on it? How do you help these, these these kids and these families? Yeah, totally. So we we have, um, gosh, I don't even think I could tell you how many people on our team. Um, we have a pain doctor and a medical doctor. We have um, integrative medicine doctor. She's also an MD. Um, we have a nurse practitioner that works in integrative we have a child psychologist. We have um, social workers, music therapy, physical mm -hmm. therapy. Um, and I think, I mean, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure I'm leaving someone out. Um, Mental health therapy? Yeah. I, yeah, I said child psychologist. Oh, yep. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> nope. Yep. Um, and they're, we're all a part of the same, you know, same team. And actually, you know, Erin, as you mentioned, that our patients with chronic pancreatitis, um, you know, a lot of them have a genetic um, defect that causes that. And that's actually the, what the, what the team was built around initially. Um, and then, and on that team specifically, like a surgeon and, and his um, nurse practitioner are also on that team. Um, but it's become this broader chronic pain team that we really treat all of our patients, um, both inpatient and outpatient. Um, so, and the, the really, really interesting piece is I work very closely with the medical doctor, um, who can prescribe pain medications. And when we see a patient for the first time, that's a two hour evaluation. They come and they see us. Um, I actually just had one this week. Um, they come and they see us, we get a general background information about when their pain started, how long it's been going on. Um, as you can imagine, two hours later, we're starting to paint a picture of, you know, kind of what they've been going through. Um, you know, this pain didn't come on overnight. It didn't start overnight and it, um, it didn't go away overnight. So it's a lot to talk about. It's really important um, to get that full history. And then and then we start right away that first, you know, initial visit, then we're, we're giving them tips and tricks. We're giving them pain neuroscience education. We are, um, you, you know, sending them home with a, you know, list of exercises. Then usually what I'm saying to them is, okay, and now I want you to come see me for physical therapy in the clinic um, in an outpatient yeah. setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You talked before, um, so it's awesome you take the time for education, which I think is the biggest thing that I know in the outpatient world is really hard for us yeah. where we have, we are lucky we have 40-minute visits, but sometimes it can take multiple visits just to get the education piece oh, in. Yeah. Um, but I, I know where our last conversation we all had together, you guys had four requirements that your team had, you know, had patients commit to. And I love that because it's a lot of what we've talked about in this podcast. You Can you go through that for everyone? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, the biggest thing that our pain doc, um, you know, sends them away with is he tells them, you know, you need to, you need to have a psychologist. You need to be going to um, psychology and seeing your counselor. You need to be going to the integrative um, medicine doctor or nurse practitioner 
um, you need to be going to physical therapy and you need to be normalizing your school schedule. So of course I work with pediatrics, so it's, Mm -hmm. it's school, it's their social life, it's, um, their sports and, um, their, their sleep. Their sleep, of course. You guys have done a whole episode on it. Their sleep. <laughs> we just talked about yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you need to be doing all those – you need to be doing those four things all at the same time. And then he says there's a fifth option that is the only option that's optional, um, and that is medication. So he really – I mean, his big thing is uh, medications aren't going to make you better. They're maybe going to allow you to do the things that you need to do that are going to make you better which are all of those things we just talked about. Um, But that's the only optional piece of his treatment plan, Um, which, I mean, how empowering for patients, one. And and then that's when he says to them, are you willing to do whatever you can to make your pain go away? Even if it requires hard work. Right. And, you know, (laughs) they're kids. So they're like, yeah. so sometimes they go, no. <laughs> and their parents, their parents like shoot them a look and they're like, oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> we got to get everyone well, on board. That's, that's great because, I mean, it just reiterates this is why we can, we're all in different settings, but we're speaking the same language. Um, this stuff isn't sexy. It's really not. But it's about these normalizing your routines and getting into a pattern and learning more about your body. Absolutely. And and we always tell them, you know, their function is going to improve before their pain improves. You totally. know, and that's that's that is our measure of progress is are you able to do more? Are you getting back to your life? Are you mm-hmm. uh, and then if you're if you're not, if your function's not improving, okay, that's you know, that's really where we come in. That's what physical therapy is, right? We're all about function. Yeah. How how do you function in your life and how can we help you function better in your life? So when I just love the blunt li- bluntness of your conversations, which happen often in Michelle and I's office too, yeah. but often people haven't been told that prognostic discussion of this is this will all get better, but this is what's important. This is how we get there. And Kayla, how long do you usually tell people it'll take? Uh, I, a year. Right. And, and <laughs> ding, I, ding, 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 ding. Yep. And I and I only tell them a year because forever sounds um sounds too harsh no it's they're gonna get better they're gonna and they're gonna like I said function they're gonna their function is going to improve within the year um but yeah it's a it's a year-long process process so buckle up but the forever sorry go ahead Michelle yeah that's okay I think the the fact of if you can get them to commit to a year and they can see that change over that course of a year then they're on board for forever. Right. Exactly what I was going to say is like, we're creating lifelong habits that aren't going away. um, And often the white elephant in our room. Absolutely. And what I, and I, what I tell my patients is what I'm teaching you are tools in your toolbox. These are not things that you're going to do for, you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and then you're going to forget about these things. You better be piling this stuff away in your little bedside journal, and they need to be things that you're working through and talking through every day of your life. Um, And, you know, the way I talk to my pediatric patients about it is these are tools in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. And you've got different tools for different things. And so when your shoulder hurts, here's your tools for, for working on your shoulder pain. When your stomach mm-hmm. hurts, here's here's all the tools for working through your stomach pain. Some of those tools are, you know, multi-use tools. They can be used mm-hmm. for all of those things, like deep diaphragmatic breathing and, um, you know, working through some progressive muscle relaxation. Um, and then some of them are more specific, like here is this, you know, soft tissue, self-mobilization of your, you know, neck muscles for, for decreasing headache pain. So they're tools in their toolbox that they are going to use for the rest of their lives. And really patient specific. So back to looking at someone's entire routine and, and kind of what they're going through on a day-to-day basis. Totally. And being very holistic. And when we talk about, you know, resiliency too, like that's, that's what these tools are for, 
for mm-hmm. to carry them through your whole life so that you can get through it and you can so that you're not suffering from your pain. You're you have the tools and you feel empowered to use them to treat your pain. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's so great. Um, do you have any good recent kind of um, patient example. I know the holiday has been, is always a tough time in a physical therapy clinic. I'm sure it is in the hospital setting as well. Um, but just giving people a peek into that world. Yeah. Your day-to-day world. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had, it, it actually was an amazing week for me. I had a mom, you know, it, I have a student right now. So that's, you know, I love I just thinking about the fact that this journey started for me working in chronic pain, working with people with persistent pain started as a student. So I love when I get to teach my student about, um, you know, how what what treating chronic pain is like. Um, it's like I said, these are tools in your toolbox for everyone's life, for one. Um, but especially as a physical therapist to know how to treat chronic pain is is like, honestly, it's so important for Every area, whether it's inpatient, outpatient, yeah. there, you know, there's, there's a use for it. Um, <clears throat> but she was sitting in on this, you know, telehealth visit with me um, this week. And this is a, a patient of mine that started in the middle of the pandemic via telehealth. I've never actually seen him in person. Um, mm-hmm. And his um, mom, his mom looked at my student and he said, she said, you listen to everything I'm saying right now. Whatever Kayla says you need to listen to her. You need to learn from her. <laughs> and then she, you know, proceeded to tell tell my student all about everything they've been through. And really, in a nutshell, this patient had was his original diagnosis was, you know, juvenile juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Um, he mm-hmm. has ev- all all the joints in his body were hurting. Um, yeah. And you know, and then they, you know, they live you know, in a rural area, they've got a lot of land. They love to hunt. They love to fish. Um, they, they love to be outside, but anytime a storm would come through, he, his pain would just, you know, skyrocket. It was a big, big thing. Um, and we've been working together for probably six months now. Um, and you know, paid neuroscience education, all the things that you guys have talked in all these episodes, you know, leading up to this one, um, you know, all those things were topics that we've talked about at some point. Um, you know, the mom brought up the fact that the first time we wanted to do, she was like, maybe we want to do yoga. Like it's a good movement thing. And I was like, absolutely. Let's try it. You know, the first couple of times we were doing like child's pose and he was in so much pain. I was like, okay, I guess we're going to lay down today <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and we're going to talk about breathing, you know, and, and his mom brought that up to my student and she's like, and now today I was able, and that day, uh, this, you know, this week, I was able to run him through a full, um, you know, yoga, you know, session of, you know, 30 minute yoga session where he was doing down dog and um, he was going into a plank and like all of these things. And his mom, his mom had stepped away because of course, you know, we're in these great um, pandemic times where kids are all doing um you know, their schooling online. So mom was like, okay, you can take him. I'm going to go with his sister and we're going to go do school now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I had him grab his mom at the end when we had, you know, had this little chat and she was like, the fact that you just told me he was doing a plank today. She's like, when we had to lay down the first day we tried yoga because it was too much. And, and that's what she's saying to my student. She's like, you, you have to, you have to be patient you have to be reassuring. Mm-hmm. You have to stay persistent about this because she goes in September. I was ready to throw in the towel. I, she was like, I didn't, I didn't think there was any way he was going to get better. And again, what I'm doing with him, you know, to some, to ma, to his mom was a miracle, right? Mm-hmm. But to me, I'm like, this is basic physical therapy and basic pain neuroscience education, right? Yeah. And this is, again, this is like, you know, back to why can we treat patients with pain when we have pain? But, you know, there are people who, you know, have back pain who can hardly get out of bed, right? And yeah. and he was one of those people. He, like, like his mom said, when school first started and they were doing, you know, online schooling, she's like, he couldn't even sit in a chair. She's like, Kayla, do you yeah. remember? Wow. He couldn't even sit in a chair. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I mean, I and I turned to my student and I go, I swear I didn't pay her to say this. 
Um, but it, and that's like his mom was like, "You empowered me to be able to carry through this um, with with him, and to be able to, you know." follow through with the education that you provided to him. And she goes, it's made all of us better. She's like, yeah. as it, she said, as, and this was, you guys have talked about mantras before. Um, their, their mantra as a family was we can do hard things. Yeah. And that's so awesome. Uh, and I like, and, and it, that, you know, right away I, because I'm in, you know, physical therapy mode, I'm like, but you cannot, you know, underestimate the amount of, of effect that you had on being a constant person in his life giving him that mantra and then as a family all being on the same board with that mantra. I mean, it, Mm -hmm. it, it matters. It matters that he had, you know, teammates, right? You know, we all have teammates, you know, I was talking about my team, my pain team and how important it is that Dr. Armfield is, you know, supporting me and, and, you know, telling, you know, patients that physical therapy is the most important thing. You need to be doing physical therapy and I will give you medications if you need those to help you do physical therapy. But if you're not doing physical therapy, then you're not helping yourself. So Right, because that's what is getting them better. And I think like you described so well, we've talked about this around mindset and mantra and environment, but that's mm-hmm. that's huge. So I love like you truly created and often I'm sure in the pediatric world, you're creating a group of resilient humans, not just the child. Right. I'm trying. I was going to make that point awesome. too. You're trying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's resiliency for everyone, not not just the person who is coming to see you. Well, totally. Because you know for a fact his mom has chronic pain. You know you know, <laughs> she's got that knee yeah. injury from high school or whatever that she's been suffering through that, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. and is getting in the way of her being able to get out and get in the boat and, you know, and... And she, you know, my favorite part, especially with telehealth, you know, we get to meet everyone's animals now. Everybody, oh, yes. you know, <laughs> we get to know what's going on, at, you know, at home. And, and you know, mom, mom was saying, oh, you know, they've got all the hunting guns in the background and stuff. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then she's like, oh, I guess this isn't school. So this isn't, you know, yeah. <laughs> we need to worry about. But, um, you know, she's like, she's getting right in there with him. She's like, you don't see me, but I'm doing yoga too, you know, and, and then the, yeah, the sister oh, is getting in on it because, you know, mom's like, well, this is gym class today, you know. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 information for every every member of the family. And forever and creating new habits and new daily routines. And totally. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I also think the other great thing about telehealth is just the autonomy and independence for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I know, um, you know, the quick transition given the pandemic was interesting, but actually some of my most successful people I've treated and, and honestly, I've, I've thought telehealth is amazing. I've seen honestly, not a whole lot of limits for it because most of it is teaching others, even with manual therapy, teaching how to do self mobilizations and things like that. And, and information is power. There's time and place where I need to help someone out for sure, for sure. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of times our bodies are amazingly powerful when we have the right tools, like you said, in that toolbox. Um, But some of my most successful people I've treated, honestly, were in the persistent pain group. uh, Mm -hmm. And they finally adjusted their routine. And you're exactly right, Kayla. I actually got a peek into their world a little bit more, which is great. Uh, And oftentimes I found... It was their daily routine, and I, I say this often in clinic. It's the stuff I, sometimes we're doing outside of exercising that's yeah. getting us. Totally. <laughs> that's causing a lot of this discomfort. So it's it's been really fun to see a lot of those people drop off my caseload and be managing like a champ. So And, you know, it's interesting. You guys talked last episode about um, – how important it is, you know, your, your bed is for sleeping and, and, you know, a lot of these kids want to do their schoolwork in their bed. And that's, that's the first thing I'm like, nope, nope. I don't care where you're doing it, but you're not doing it in your bed. Your bed is for sleep. Yep. We're going to keep it that way. Um, you need to find, we need to create a desk space. So I've literally spent full sessions where I've talked about ergonomics of a desk setup. And I've mm-hmm. said, how can we recreate this in your room? And I'm literally like, okay, now move your camera. I want to see, okay, where's your desk? Where are your, you yep. know, show me your alignment. Like, 
You know, that's literally the conversations that we're having now. That's awesome. And an outpatient, oh my gosh, I mean, how often, Michelle, do you have oh. someone with neck or low back pain where yeah. we can, we figure out, you know, their biggest aggravator is they sit at their desk for two hours with no movement and their screen's rotated to the right and right. their right side yeah. of their neck hurts. Yeah. But it's, it's hard so cool. to objectively look at your body and take a, st- right. a 300 foot step back, I usually exactly. say. Exactly. Yeah. But it's usually some simple things that make these tremendous, tremendous changes in mm-hmm. people's lives. So you have a wonderful um, quote, Kayla. I know um, we've talked a lot about kind of that attitude of resiliency versus suffering. And, and honestly, just hearing you talk how passionately about your job and patience, it's really, it's always inspiring for me, but it it's always fun to hear about, but you're truly kind of their coach. I often say we're coaches as physical therapists. They're their biggest cheerleader um, on giving them the best pain neuroscience and best science education, honestly, um, where we're changing people's perspectives of getting more resilient um, and, and more tools in that toolbox. But I think you summed it up pretty perfect the other day when we were chatting, do you remember what you said? Yeah. This was another yeah. uh, on the back so, step needing to leave after a walk. Yep. And we're talking about pain reference, neuroscience. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, well, and what I always tell my, my um, kiddos before we sign off on telehealth or before they leave the clinic, I review everything we talked about that day from a pain neuroscience standpoint. I, you know, review which exercises I want them to be doing for whatever body part is hurting that week or whatever um, we're working on that week, whether it's, you know, changing up their routine or whatever. Um, and I always tell them, you know, at the end of the day, you got, you have to do something fun. Do do one thing that's fun, one thing you enjoy. Um, Fill that joy cup up. Absolutely. Movement is joy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> movement is medicine is what we say. Yes. Yeah, movement is yes. medicine. Um, but yeah, so is joyfulness. Joyfulness is medicine. Um, and the, um, one of the things that I've found joy in recently is, um, Ted Lasso. I don't know if you guys have watched it at all. (laughs) Um, I think it's the best TV show that's ever been made. I'm not even joking. It's hilarious. It's got the good, it's got the sad, it's got the bad, but everything is light. And so, and, and Ted Lasso is this like, you know, hopeless, optimistic, hopelessly optimistic, um, just gem of a human being. And, you know, he goes over to be this, um, he's a football coach and he goes over to be a soccer coach in England, um, for a losing team. And, you know, he doesn't know anything about soccer and it's, uh, it's so funny, but he's, he's got this big, you know, um, motivational speech at the end of an episode, you know, during the game, I can't, you know, I can't remember if it was halftime or at the end of the game, but, you know, he talked, the big saying in town for the team is, um, it's the hope that kills you because they are this, you know, this losing team. It's the hope that kills you. Um, and, and he, you know, he comes on and he's telling, talking to the team. He's like, I don't believe that. I don't believe that's true. I believe it's the lack of hope that kills you. Um, yeah. And so, you know, that's, that's so true. I mean, and then, you know, we were, that's why we were talking about this too. It's because, you know, <laughs> when it comes to pain, the lack of hope that it's going to get better is yeah. it's, mm-hmm. it's what, it's what causes you to suffer versus yeah. have resilience through your pain and be able to function in your life. Yeah. I think definitely. that could be used as a good mantra. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <Good> mantra. <laughs> Sounds like a great mantra. Yeah, you're feeling down. Perfect mantra. It's the lack of hope I that kills it. you. Awesome. Yeah, well, I don't think great. I don't think we could have ended it on a better note. So Truly. it's the it's the lack of hope that kills you. Kayla, thank you so much for joining us. We are so happy to have you. And I think that we will probably have to have you back again. Oh, I would love that. To share more, share more knowledge with us and all of all of our listeners. So thank you all for joining us. We hope you enjoyed everything that Kayla had to share. And stay tuned because like Aaron said, we will have more guests to come. Stay well, everyone. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>